Hello, my name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome, please subscribe. If you are a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you might want to torture. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in our series on simple linear regression. And specifically, it is about confidence interval bands. And you've probably seen these at some point, but you may not be quite sure what it, what it means or where it comes from. What we're gonna try to do is obviously explain what those are, demystify them a bit, tell you about what it means, and actually how you can calculate them because it's not too bad in simple linear regression. Let's go ahead and talk about confidence interval bands in regression. So this video is brought to you by the great people at The Great Courses Plus. So as I always say, you are here watching this video because you either need to or want to learn something new. So there are a few better places to learn anything than The Great Courses Plus, where there's access to over 10,000 video lectures on everything from math to cooking to photography and philosophy and literature and everything else. So please follow the link in the description below where you can get a free trial for The Great Courses Plus, and of course support my channel and The Great Courses Plus as well. Let's go ahead and talk about confidence interval bands in regression. So I mentioned notation, so you have to get this out of the way. So you're gonna see X star. X star is the value of interest for the dependent variable X. In this case, it's $64, okay? That's all, that's all it means. That's the value we're looking at. You'll see Y star. So Y star is just the possible values that Y may take when X is X star. So Y is the possible values of Y, in this case, when X is $64, okay? That's all that means. Expected value of Y. Now this is the expected or mean value of Y when X is X star. So the expected value of Y star is the mean value of Y when in this case, X is $64. And here we actually have our regression equation, sort of the standard form. So Y hat star equals B sub zero, that's the intercept, plus B sub one X star, that is our slope, and then our value for the independent variable, X in this case is 64. So again, this is just some notation. You may not even wanna pay attention to it, that's fine, so I'll try to make it as you know, layperson language as possible as we go, but that's the notation. So in this last one, this Y hat star is kind of two things. It's the point estimator of the mean or expected value of E Y star. It's also can be the predictor of an individual value of Y star. So we are going to look at primarily the first one here. Okay, we'll just know that this regression equation can be, depending on what you're doing, can be utilized in different ways. So confidence intervals, that's what we're gonna to try to get at. So remember, we have seen this form of an equation so many times, it's hard to even count. So when we're developing a confidence interval, we have the same standard uh, format. We have a predicted value in this case of Y or some sort of point estimator. You kind of think of this as a point estimator. Plus or minus a margin of error. So over here on the right, that whole term is the margin of error. Just like a confidence interval for the slope of the regression line we did in the, the past video, this is the same standard form for a confidence interval for the mean, which is like eight chapters ago or something. Same standard form. Point estimator plus or minus a margin of error. So T alpha over two is just based off the T distribution in the back of your textbook or anywhere else you find it, depending on your sample size, so N minus two. And then we have the estimated standard deviation of y hat star. So that's the standard deviation of this confidence interval. So this seems like gobbledygook maybe right now, but we're gonna go ahead and put the values in, it'll all make sense as we go. But just remember the standard form for a confidence interval is point estimator plus or minus a margin of error, which is, com which is composed of the, the t value and then a standard deviation over here on the right. Now we already know this T alpha over two because we've been using it in the past like three or four videos. Because we're using the same data set that has six observations, we can find this T value in minus two, which is six minus two, degrees of freedom is four. Go to the back of the textbook and we find what that is for a 
in the T distribution, 0.025 on each end. Then that is 2.7764. We've been doing that in the previous videos. So we already have that. And guess what? We already have the predicted value of y because that comes from our regression equation. So again, we already have two of the three. So to find that uh, predicted value, again, we use our regression equation for the bill of $64. We need to substitute in and we get an estimated tip amount or tip amount of $8.53 or 54 cents. We've already done this. So now we have this value and we have the T alpha over two. And the only thing we're missing is this uh, center deviation over here on the right. And that's what we're gonna calculate. So really when we're doing this confidence interval, we already got two other three things we need. They're really easy to get. One comes from the regression equation. One comes from the back of your book. The last thing we gotta find is over here on the right. Okay, so what is the standard deviation of y hat star? Oh my gosh, that's crazy looking, isn't it? That's nasty. But it's not really that hard. Because again, you already have a lot of this. Um, it's given by the regression output or you've, we've done it in previous videos, it's really, really not, it looks nasty, but it's not that hard. So what do we have here? Standard error of the estimate, or the root mean square error, depending on what software you're using, that's in your regression output, okay? And actually we learned about how to calculate it by hand in a previous video, so we got that. X star is the value of the dependent variable we are interested in. In this case, it's 64, it's $64, we got that. X bar is the mean of the dependent variable. We already got that. Remember that's $74. It's the mean bill amount, $74. So X of I is the observed value of the dependent variable, and that is used in the summation equation down here. Okay, so you, you find the difference between the observed value and the mean value, you square them and then add them up. We've actually already done that. And then of course, N is the number of observations. We have this. We either have it already, it's in the regression output or it's easy to find. So no need to freak out. All right, so let's go ahead and put some numbers in. So remember that the 2.742029 is the standard error of the estimate from the regression output that we did and we calculated it by hand previously. So we're, again, we're interested in $64 tip. 74 is the mean of the bill or the uh, meal amounts. Number of observations is six. And then this 4206 we previously calculated in another video. We've used that in other calculations. So from here, it's just good old algebra. All right, so we uh, go ahead and do that. We do our subtraction in there. Then we square it. So we have you know, negative 10 squared. Go ahead and continue on. We do under the uh, square root sign. So we have 2.742029 times the square root of 0 0.190442. We go ahead and do the square root and then the multiplication. And then we get a, a standard deviation of y hat star of 1.196613. So again, all that is, is sticking in numbers we already have, or you already have, doing a little bit of algebra, and then getting the answer. That's all it is. Now we have the third component of our confidence interval for the mean value of y at a given x. So there is our confidence interval. We go ahead and substitute everything in. So we that we know already. Now we go ahead and substitute in what we just found, which is 1.196613. Go ahead and do, again, some simple math. So this is our confidence interval. 8.537 and change, plus or minus 3.32 and some change. So we're gonna get an interval. And here's our interval. So 5.2154 to 11.86. So this is our 95% confidence interval for the mean value of Y when X, our bill amount is 64. So we look down here, what we can say is that we are 95% confident that the mean tip amount for a bill of $64 is between $5.22 and $11.86. So here's our regression line, and we have, I'm trying to do this visually for you. Here's our regression line, and then we have our bill of $64 over here on the right. Now at that point, we have a distribution 
of means. So I'm going to put a distribution at that point. So the lower boundary is 5.215. The upper boundary of that is 11.86. So this is our 95% confidence interval for the mean tip amount when the bill is $64. And voila, here is the computer output we had before. I took off the black box. Here is our interval we calculated by hand. So if you look at $64, we have 5.2154 in the computer output. We have 5.215473, same thing, and our by hand calculation. And then we have 11.860133116 for the upper in the computer output. And then we have 11.860113 in the by hand calculation here at the bottom. So we have just done a 95% confidence interval calculation, quote, by hand, and got the exact same value that the computer did for us. So obviously the computer will do it for you, but the whole point of these videos is for you to understand what is actually going on and where this stuff comes, comes from and how to interpret it. And there it is. Okay, so we're, I think we're almost done here. Here is our interval for $64. It's right there. So here's the upper and lower of that interval. Now if we do that for all of our data, this is what we get. You can see that this is the beginning of our confidence interval bands. So the line in the middle is a regression line. Okay, that's the line that goes through the middle. And then the orange line on the bottom is our lower 95% confidence band, in the edge of the band. And then the sort of yellow orange color at the top is the upper boundary of our 95% confidence interval band. And again, those are just based off the numbers over here on the left. So you can see this kind of pattern developing. All we're doing is graphing three values on the same graph to get these bands. But you see this pattern developing. And that is this. If we, the scale is a little bit different just because of the shape of the, of the graphs. But what we just saw on the previous slide is this from a computer output. So the curvatures and everything match what we did in the previous um, slide. The one thing you noticed is that the band is not a straight line, okay? It kind of flares out at the ends, and there's a reason for that. And it has to do with this value right here. So remember, the confidence interval is specific to a, a value of x. In this case, it's 64. But as we you know, progress out to other values for x, or independent variable, it's going to change this equation slightly. And what happens is... The, the deviation from the mean as you get farther out, okay, this deviation here that I put in the um, rectangle, that part of the equation becomes larger. So the farther you get from the mean of 74 out on the ends, this part of the equation gets larger, and therefore the interval gets slightly larger. And that's what happens. That's why the confidence interval band flares out on the ends. So a few final points. So the estimated variance, or you can think of it as the width of that confidence interval uh, of y hat star is at its narrowest, or the estimated variance is at its minimum at the mean of the independent variable. So you remember the confidence interval kind of flared out at the end? Well, the variance is at its smallest at the mean of that independent variable there in the middle which in this case was $74, that's where the confidence interval is at its most narrow. So this is where the variance or the width of that confidence interval is at its minimum. So X star is the, remember, the value we're interested in. X bar is the mean. Well, what happens when they're the same? Well, when we're interested in, like, say, the mean value, that would be 74 minus 74, which in this case is zero. So if we put that in to this equation, you can see that this term here in the red actually becomes zero. So that becomes zero. Now algebraically, everything you know, becomes zero, divide, that's all gone. So you end up with the standard deviation of y hat star is just the standard error of the mean times the square root of one over n because everything on the other side reduces to zero. 
So this is where the interval is the most narrow because the variance is the least. So we can deduce that the most precise estimate of the mean value of y is when x star, what we're interested in, is x bar. So in this case, you could actually put it back in and say, we can deduce that the most precise estimate of the mean value of y occurs when x star equals 74, because 74 is also the mean value of x. That's where it's more most precise. So as x star that we're interested in gets farther from the mean, the confidence interval will become wider and the confidence band will flare out towards the end. And that is why. This video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus, where you can get unlimited access to over 10,000 different video lectures taught by award-winning professors from the Ivy League and other top schools around the world. You can learn about anything that interests you, science, literature, and yes, statistics, like this lecture from Professor Michael Starbird called Real Estate, Accounting for Value, from his course, Meaning from Data, Statistics Made Clear. And right now, The Great Courses Plus is offering my viewers a free trial and is also now optimized for Australia and the UK. So go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash Brandon Foltz, my name, to have access to the 10,000 video lecture library or click on the link in the description below. Okay, so that was a long video on the confidence interval band in simple linear regression. But unfortunately, it's just one of those things that you really have to explain a few different, you know, things in and then put it all together at the end. I like to show things visually, so that takes a little bit, a little bit of time. So I apologize for the length of this video, but I'm hoping that it really helped explain where everything comes from, what it all means, why things look the way they do, why things are shaped the way they do, and then obviously point out that when you do it by hand, if you do it correctly, you'll get the exact same thing that the computer does. So I hope you found this video helpful and even may maybe more so insightful, and I look forward to seeing you again in our next video. Take care.